What's up, guys? Michael Anthony here. Welcome to the first show. This is The Beat on the Street, where we'll be covering multiple genres in electronic music, also music videos and musician interviews. Today, I've collaborated with Cole, owner of Retro Reverb Records, and I'm joined with him now uh, to introduce the new show. How are you today, Cole? Hey, Mike. Uh, thanks for having me on, and thanks for letting... Uh... Retro Reverb Records be a supporter of this show. Uh, we're really, we're really pleased to to be working together and collaborating with you. Fant fantastic opportunity. Thank you. Awesome. I'm I'm very happy to be collaborating as well too. Um, so breakdown of the show. We're going to be doing uh, music videos, some artist cameos, um, musician interviews. Uh, we also have uh, top three synthwave charts but we break down some of the top three tracks on the chart. Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. So um, fr from, from, from what we've discussed, um, we're going to be, um, we're going to be mixing up, aren't we? We're going to, we're going to have a sort of uh, a mix of maybe some better known artists, but definitely some of the uh, lesser known artists in the scene. Um, and we'll be looking for new talent, new sounds. Um, it's kind of the inspiration behind the name Beat on the Street, wouldn't you agree? Yes, definitely. Any indie artist out there, uh, if you're just starting out, uh, if you're with a label, any, anybody, submit your uh, music and information. We'll have a, a link to where you could submit that as well, too. This way we could try to get you on the show. Yeah, um, that would be great. That would be great, wouldn't it? Yes, um, definitely. I think the the next thing that we're, we're trying to do is like these little uh, sort of cameo interviews, aren't, aren't we? Um, and I think the idea behind that is that um, artists will come on. We'll, uh, we'll probably ask them some random or, or maybe more sort of questions about themselves. Um, but we'll also just be featuring their track or their video. Um, and it, it's more like a, a get to know you uh, type situation. The artist, is that, is that right? Yes, exactly. Uh, maybe we could do a, um, a format, a, like an AMA, ask me anything. Maybe we throw a couple surprise questions at them, see how they respond, um, just to see. This way everyone can, you know, get to know them, get to know some of their uh, stuff that you don't hear normally on other, uh, you know, on, on their music, stuff like that. Uh, the last thing you mentioned was um, the, the Symphony chart, which is obviously organized uh, by us, Retro River Records, but it's completely mm -hmm. independent. Um, and by that, what I mean is um, people submit their music and, and then the public get to, to vote on it. I, just like everyone else, can have free votes um, on, my, on, on the chart that I created. Uh, and it's the same for everyone. Um, it's important to know that the artists can't vote for themselves. Doing very brief reviews on the top three winners, is that correct? Yes, exactly. That's a great format. Yeah, uh, looking forward to that. And this is um, this is just part of uh, we have some core values at Retro Reverb Records. And when when we started uh, up the label, um, a lot of people don't think this about record labels or believe it, but we were quite invested in making sure that we support the scene and collaborate with our artists in a positive way. So mm -hmm. a lot of these things uh, that we do, like the Simple Web Chart, Beat on the Street. Um, our charity albums, and also just if you look at our roster of who we sign, it, it, it's quite varied, um, are all things that are part of these core values that we really strive to ad adhere to at all times, no matter what goes on um, within uh, the label. So uh, the Simple Web chart is, is one of those fantastic yeah. things that I really enjoy, actually. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. I think it's great for the, the community. I think it's great for everyone, you know, try to get there their music heard, you know, another uh, way to get their, their stuff heard. Um, yeah, Synthwave is definitely, you know, uh, a great big community, I have to say. It's been fun the past year, almost two years, uh, collaborating and listening to a lot of <clears throat> artists, uh, music videos, soundtracks, um, vocals, instrumentals. It, it's, it's just a great- Are you watching this this pilot episode, um, the, 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 uh, the shows will be the beat on the street will be available bi-weekly on retro Reba records youtube channel and our twitch channel and all of pop art avenues uh, are probably on your website and uh, yeah. your youtube page and and again all the links will be in the yeah. description below 
Check yes, us out. <laughs> <laughs> we just released a new single, uh, End of Time, with Alex Vecchietti. I hope I Vecchietti, pronounced that Vecchietti. Correctly. Vecchietti. I'm a Jersey Italian. I apologize, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> but cool. Um, what was it like to... I saw you had a music video. So what was it like coming up with the music video and the track itself? Uh, well, the track... Um, the lyrics were written by uh, Alex and myself. Um, the melody for the lyrics was written by me. Um, the track was mostly produced by Alex. Uh, and then the video, the location was chosen by Alex, but we both filmed it together. Oh, um, awesome. It was uh, it was this lighthouse on the coast um, near to where I live. Um, and as you can see in the video, it's it's it was quite a winter's day. It was quite cold and, and wet, and um, uh, you can see the greys and the blues and the hues, the purple hues and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, we chose it because we felt that the sea and the coastline was very symbolic of the energy um, that is here in, in Sicily. And the track is about like connections and energy. So uh, that was kind of like just the, the basic inspiration behind it. And also it just looked good. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely, definitely stuck out. I did like the, the scenery, the environment that you guys filmed it in. I thought it was awesome. <laughs> Yeah, we're blessed. We're blessed here um, with that kind of thing in Sicily. So we have to utilize all the free stuff we can. And uh, that's one of them. Yeah, I remember you guys were also on um, a different show, Static Realms, the uh, Synthomania. You guys were also uh, performed an event on there as well. Yeah, yeah, that was super good fun. Uh, we went down to uh, a bar in, in Palermo, which is the, the capital of uh, Sicily. And mm -hmm. um, we set up and, uh, and performed. It, actually, there were people there, but you can't see that in the video because we had to have the camera in front of the crowd because of the dimensions of, of the thing, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but yeah, no, a really, really fun, fun, uh, fun set. Enjoyed that a lot. Actually, it was one of my first real live sets performing my own tracks as well. Um, so I was on the keyboards, Alex uh, was singing and um, Alex is more of the musician than I am. He was playing the guitar and singing and stuff. Well, uh, I did sing in the last track, it was my, my yes. debut yeah. vocal performance. <laughs> oh, was it? That's awesome. Yeah. That's really cool how you, you had a, like almost like a live set you were recording on. That's really cool. Yeah, well, we hope the energy, again, the energy, I don't want to overuse the word, uh, translated in, in, in the video. We put some cool effects and some nice lighting on it in the venue. And, uh, you know, we had a few drinks and uh, it, was, it was good fun. That's awesome. That's really cool. So back to Retro Reverb Records, um, how is it like uh, having a label? And I noticed you also have a lot of new uh, signings as well, too, from February. Yeah, we had a bit of an influx of, of uh, signings recently. Uh, the shout goes out to uh, Liquid Mo Modern, um, to Alexa or Elixa, uh, or however he wants to pronounce. I should know. Sorry. Sorry, Luca. Um, <laughs> uh, and, sorry, uh, Al. And A. <laughs> yeah, we just announced today that we got uh, V Vampire as well. Um, so a little bit of a mixture there. We're always looking to diversify our sounds, the types of artists that we've got, but we've got some, some core artists who have been with us for a long time. The group Fantastic, Eden Future, uh, Honeybeard, of course, Alex Vicchietti, mm -hmm. uh, The Sub Theory, and loads of others as well who, um, there's too many to mention, I can't just list them all. Um, yeah, of course. Yeah, but... Um, <clears throat> Yeah, no, really pleased with the artists that uh, we have and, and that we work with and the, the, the different sounds that we're able to, you know, release on a regular basis. Yeah, I do like that a lot. I noticed a lot of my, um, a lot of my band camp purchases were from a lot of the artists on your, on your label. Oh, I'm really? Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> Mobs um, is awesome. One of their releases. Oh, yeah, they were there. They're the latest, latest one. People, you need to buy their tape. It's bloody good, and they yes. deserve to. They it's deserve to set, sell that. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a really cool, awesome album. Yes, it is. Um, anything coming out uh, for the rest of twenty twenty two? Any future? Uh, yeah, yeah. Loads I'm sure of you're things. busy. <laughs> uh, just like an endless stream of stuff. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, we've got got a release next week. Um, 
uh, we've got the, I must mention the charity album and uh, yeah. the State of Sin, Julian and Dennis will be doing a live show for the release That's of our awesome. charity album, which is for mental health, which is Retro Reverb Rhythms Volume 2. It's got over 30 artists from in the scene uh, on wow. it. Yeah. Um, and um, I'm still trying to decide on the format, um, but hopefully maybe vinyl, um, but definitely probably CD and the uh, tape and digital obviously that's really cool yeah that's 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 good um and then other like i mean honestly music wise just loads just just keep your just just go to our page it's, it's almost every week we've got something coming out by somebody new um but some other sort of non-music things um we've got a retro game that's available on our website called Kitar kitty uh oh, the wow. demo the demo version's out now we're, we're still ironing out the uh the creases um www.retroreverberecords.com uh, <laughs> and um, we have uh, an exciting uh, venture um, where we will be we, it's called like media creations and we've got quite a lot of creative people who work with us who do pixel art 3d animation artwork mastering and mixing and we are basically selling their services uh, on our website so I would refer to it as a one-stop shop release place. So you could probably come, you could buy a piece of artwork, you could buy a video, you can have your track mixed and mastered. And if you want, wow. you could you could place a, uh, a hard copy release, which we would organize for you. And again, we're, we're really trying to, and I want people to understand this, we're really trying to support the scene. So we're tr trying to keep the prices down to make it, as affordable for artists as possible, because we know running a label that the overheads are the things that hit you. Because it's hard enough to sell music that, and, and you need to present that music in a professional way with artwork and videos and it needs to be well mixed and mastered and have a nice sound. And we know that those costs can really rack up. So yeah, you have to pay a bit, um, but we, guarantee that it's going to be competitive <laughs> oh, that's perfect that's great that's also good to know for any artists out there we have to yep. thank you cole for uh this is definitely going to be a fun time a fun show i'm glad you uh approached me with the idea of collaborating for a show as well too no problem i'm, I'm like honestly it's your show so i mean i'm just uh just looking forward to seeing the the artists that you get on the the type of questions that that go and obviously just promoting it and, and getting it out there and you know for everyone out there in the scene um we're all working together because we are in a niche scene so um mm -hmm. remember to you know like comment share not just your stuff other people's stuff too um because we all put a lot of effort and time into what we've been doing. so thanks. yes definitely yeah, including you nice. including you mike thank you yeah. so much for all of the stuff you've been posting from our artists and uh, you oh, know and uh, you know you did a you did a an, an, another interview piece for me on your website which was which was great fun um yes. um so big shout out to you and uh, you know maybe i'll pop back on every now and again uh, as a as a guest and just say hi and see how it's going definitely of course definitely Thank you, Cole, for that awesome chat and interview. It's always great to hear your insight in regards to the electronic music scene. Next up, we have Ali Galaxis and her music video for Database. Computer. What happened? The left. I'm sorry, but the memory you are looking for has been refreshed. i
Welcome back, guys. That was Ali Galaxis' music video, her official video from her EP that came out in 2021. I'm here today with Ali Galaxis. Uh, let me say welcome. Thank, Thank you, you for coming on the show. Um, Thank you so much for having me. Oh, of course, of course. Um, tell me, who is Ali Galaxis? Okay, so Ali Galaxis uh, is an intergalactic supervillain uh, who travels through space and writes songs and conquers planets. And I, I seems like Ali likes to sing a lot of songs and yes. make things as well, too. Yes, I make all my own music, produce, uh, write, am the vocalist for, and create all my own uh, video content. That's really cool. So you just had a new EP come out. Um, it was I, I bought it on iTunes, so I'm familiar with it. I know it was on Spotify, YouTube. Uh, do you have a favorite track? I mean, I love all of the tracks. They all have a different place in the story of the EP, but uh, I think the song Galaxy is my favorite because it was the first one that I ever wrote. Um, I wrote it back in 2018. And it was the first, um, the first Ollie Galaxis song that oh, wow. came to exist. And that song was kind of the catalyst for all of the other songs to exist. Uh, I think all of the rest of them stem from that song. So um, I'm also just, I really like the lyrics. I just, it's my, one of my favorite things I've ever written. So. That's really cool. So you actually, you write everything, you produce everything. Yes. You come up with the beats, the everything. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Thanks. Um, so 2018, you mentioned that was when you started as uh, making music as Ali Galaxis. Yes. Uh, yes. I. It's when I started developing the music. Uh, it wasn't until I'd say 2019 and then 2020 when the pandemic hit until I really had the time to work on it um, and really figure out what I wanted to say. I mean, I, I think I always knew what I wanted to say, but I had the opportunity to write more things and just, you know, obviously it was a really unfortunate circumstance, but it ended up giving me some time to reflect on things and write a lot of music. Yeah, that's awesome. How do you usually come up with uh, what you write in your lyrics? Um, I like telling stories through visuals a lot and sort of aesthetics, but there's sort of an underlying story about it. Like all of the songs, uh, no matter how pop or how sci-fi they are, they're all about my life. Um, and I like telling stories about my life through that sort of cinematic lens um, and taking on this character so that I can say things about th like my own life that I wouldn't otherwise say. That's really cool, that makes sense. So the seven track EP, we had Battleship, Galaxy, Database, Supernova, Power Trip, Fool, and Other Planets. Um, I believe the first video I saw was on Instagram that you did for, I believe, Supernova. Uh, hey, Captain Supernova, your position self-appointed. Do you think your people would still follow you if they knew what you did? Um, that really caught my eye, and that's what uh, started, you know, made me listen to your music. Was that one of the first songs you made, or you said it was Galaxy? Supernova was the second song I made, actually. Those were the two first songs um, that I made, and I kind of they're kind of connected in my head um, as kind of part one and part two, and then all the other ones came then after. Uh, but yeah, that song is probably my second favorite one. Oh, wow. I think I think that song is my most personal song that I've written. Mm -hmm. Now, and also with your music videos, how do you usually come up with those? I, in my head, when I'm writing the stories and the songs, 
there's always a color scheme and a visual that comes with it, especially for this album. It's titled Other Planets. And every song kind of takes place in these different planets and these different worlds um, and different color schemes. So like for Supernova, it's pink. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm working on some more videos right now that haven't come out yet. I don't know when they're going to come out, but uh, I like also kind of characters having color schemes like this character of Supernova. Her color scheme is pink. Ollie Galaxis's color scheme is blue. And, you know, I just like the idea of color schemes. Uh, and so it's sort of a color, a theme, and then what kind of location that would take place in um, and like what that says about what I'm trying to say. That's awesome. I actually never realized that you had a color scheme for, I noticed different colors, but it's cool how you came up with that, with that effect. Yeah. I like Thanks. that. I think when the other things get released, it will be a bit more clear, but I am, um, there's some things in the works that's taking longer than I intended <laughs> to, yeah, of course, to make. Of course. But yeah. So your music is on Twitch, TikTok, SoundCloud. You also have your own website. Uh, you're yes. on Twitter, YouTube, Spotify, and iTunes. Is there any other uh, way fans can find you? Uh, yes. I, I believe my music is on some other streaming services. Uh, I don't remember all of them, but I use uh, CD Baby as a, uh, what's the word? distribution service. I use CD Baby. So everything that they cover, my music should be on um, as well. Oh, okay. That's awesome. Yeah. So before we wrap it up, is there any upcoming announcements you have that you would like everyone to know? Upcoming announcements. So for one, I should have new music coming relatively soon. I don't totally know when, um, but I would expect an EP, likely a two or three song EP. Uh, and if anyone follows me and knows the song Laser Girl and has seen it on my SoundCloud, I've remade that song and I'm going to be putting it out on this EP whenever it comes out. So that's the only thing I can concretely announce. I've also um, been sort of trying to play live. I'm currently in New York. So if you live in New York, uh, maybe and follow me and you'll maybe get some announcements about that. That's really cool. Again, Ollie, thank you for taking the time to be on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, buddy, my eyes are up here. Hey, everyone, I'm Kal-El Jagger, and you're watching Beat on the Street. Boop! Coming up next, we have the music video Silver Lines from Lucy Dreams, followed by an interview with David from the group. Break into another one's mind, cause another one's child is just the birth of memory. In every wish you had.
What's up, guys? I'm here with David from Lucy Dreams. Thank you for joining me today, David. Hey, pleased to meet you, everybody. Thank you. Uh, Lucy Dreams is a trio of David, Philip, and Lucy. So my first question, who is Lucy? Uh, Lucy is an artificial band member. Um, we kind of, um, we were messing around in the studio, uh, the two of us, Phil and me. Uh, we have been friends for a long time, making music together. Um, and there was this one night um, when we kind of, you know, were fooling around in the studio, um, coupling um, different effects. We started by using analog effects and then eventually chained them up with, with uh, digital effects. And all of a sudden this uh, system, uh, started to you know uh, evolve started to kind of create um, a, a life of its own as it were and we sent sounds into the system the system processed those sounds um, eventually you know like oceans of noise and, and and huge waves of noise were were coming out of the speakers and after a while like five to ten minutes we um, you know we just heard certain patterns certain melodies in this uh, in this in this white noise in this ocean of noise um, so we said okay uh, this system apparently has developed a, a life of its own um, and we you know started digging deeper um, and and played around with the system adjusting a couple of parameters um, and we have been writing music with the system ever since um, and that's why we said, okay, this is our artificial band member. This is Lucy. We gave it a name. Um, it also has uh, a voice and and also a face. Oh, wow. That's really awesome. Um, obviously, Philip can't be with us today. Um, so, Lucy, I like that how you referred to her as an AB, the artificial band member. That's really funny. Exactly. Where you know Beginning, sorry to interrupt you. We were like, okay, is this some is this some crazy uh, AI stuff? But then we said, okay, AIs actually um, only reproduce uh, what they are fed with. So we said uh, this system actually it's it's more than an AI. We went for AB eventually, the artificial band member. Oh, that's very interesting. That's really cool. I thought maybe you were just trying to substitute the I and the B, but that's a good reference. I like that. So um, where are you guys from? Are you in, uh, and you mentioned you and Philip grew up together. Exactly. We actually grew up on the countryside uh, in Austria um, and moved to Vienna a couple of years ago. And this is where we, where we live now. This is where we um, make music now. This is where we play shows now. It's super nice to, uh, to go back to the countryside. It's in the, in the mountain regions uh, of, of Austria. But we're based in, in Vienna, the capital of Austria. Well, it's really, really nice. I always hear good things about Austria. Yeah, it's it's really it's really beautiful. Yeah. Um, what I wanted to say is that it's it's super nice to be to be connected to a metropolis like New York in this case. Yeah, of course. Yep. Yeah, I'm in um, right now. I'm in North Jersey, but right. you know, I've right. been in New York City since I was young, since I was like four years old. Okay. All the boroughs, things like that. It's a lot of fun. And it is just a small throw away from New Jersey, is it? Um, yeah, I'm about 10 minutes from Lincoln Tunnel. Yeah. And once you go through Lincoln Tunnel, you're right into the, you. Uh, you know, the start of New York City, the, the yeah. glamour, I like to call it. <laughs> I've been there two years, three years ago, actually. And, you know, it has always been kind of one of the, one of the cities of, of, of my dreams. Because, like, oh, wow. you know, New York, it... it it has such a high status in in you know world culture, pop culture that I always wanted to go there, and you know my expectations were extremely high. Oh, and that's awesome. New York managed to even, you know, it was even better than my than my expectations. There was this one moment where we took the ferry from, you know, the south end of Manhattan mm -hmm. to what is it called? It's a passenger ferry. I don't remember. Well, anyway, it was either. Um... Uh, it could have been in Jersey. Maybe you took it from to Jersey, or um, I'm sorry, I, I'm Maybe like Staten Island. Yes, where the Statue of Liberty is. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yes. Then on the way back, you see Manhattan from you know from the south perspective, and it was just so mind blowing. It wasn't a city anymore. It was kind of a a massive 
something which you don't really know what it is. So many things to interpret um, into this, you know, the like the skyline and everything. And then like two helicopters flew into into like like through the through the skyscrapers. It was just yes. like it's it really is a is a jewel. Yeah, I, I have to agree. I haven't been there in a few years because of, you know, everything that's been going on with COVID and everything. Um, I heard it's changed a little bit. I just hope yeah. it's, you know, it gets back to where it was. Yeah. Um, so uh, a lot of your music videos I, I was watching before. I, I really like them. I think they're very creative, um, especially with the music and everything. Um, the one I watched first was um, for Silver Lines. Um, where did the idea come for from uh, for that video? Um, it started uh, on a train. Actually, I was uh, on the way to a place in the countryside, um, and I sat down in the what is it called the the the, the train bistro, like where you can grab uh, grab a coffee. And I was sitting okay. there looking out of the window, and there was this uh, woman sitting. Um, in front of me um so we kind of you know started chatting a little and eventually exchanged um uh, numbers and then instagram contacts um so it turns out she is a super interesting uh, visual designer um, okay. and you know we, we just we just connected and i offered her to kind of create a track based on one of her sculptures um, so this is how it all started and then she said okay I have this uh, she has a unique design black and white works a lot with uh, with uh, uh, is it geometry geometrical oh, like, you know, oh yes geometric it, geometrics and and her art is fascinating check it out it's Esther Esther Stocker um, and she had a showroom in Vienna and she said why why not do a video in there oh wow she eventually approached us saying also you know let's let's have a look at the costumes together let's have a look at the whole how the whole setting is and yes this is how uh, the the music video came came into that's it. really cool I, I like that one part how it goes from like the the color switches like it's like almost like opposites like black and yeah. white and then you know opposite where you guys were um very interesting i like that it's a really cool backstory so I noticed on social media, you guys just signed with Aztec Records. Um, what is that like? What's the, the feeling like? Well, it's super nice to, to sign record contracts. It's, uh, you know, one of the, the big goals uh, every, every musician has, I think. Um, and we got in touch about half a year ago and uh, exchanged a couple of signals. Uh, they were interested, we were interested, um, then we negotiated and then we, we signed the contract two weeks, two weeks ago. And from then on, for me, the whole thing started to become even more exciting. We're shooting a music video next week. I'm super motivated about that. Um, we have uh, the whole, you know, there's a whole system behind it. And I think this can give our music the, the push it, it, it needs at the moment. You know, being in touch with people connected in, in, in the music universe is probably for us the, the next logic step. That's awesome. That's really cool. And you guys, you guys call your music dream pop, I believe, right? It just yeah. fits perfectly with the name, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. I agree. I sometimes, like that a lot. Sometimes we add uh, euphoric dream pop. Um, some songs are synth pop. Some songs are pure pop. Mm -hmm. um, we try to kind of, you know, hit different fields uh, with with different songs it, it always depends on which uh, input we receive from lucy and um, this is then the direction the songs eventually go in that's awesome that's really cool so you guys are on instagram twitter soundcloud uh, i see you on facebook bandcamp itunes youtube and also tiktok uh, am I missing anything else on anywhere on social media? I don't think so. I think you got okay. it. You really got it all. Okay, great. <laughs> Just so everyone knows where to find your music, your videos, things like that. Exactly. Um, Mostly our handle is lucy.dreams.dp. 
DP oh, okay. for David, which is me, and P for Phil, which is uh, my dear colleague, which I'm creating the music with. Awesome. That's really cool. So 2021, you also had Silver Lines, Dreamland, and you also came out with an EP, Everything Comes in Waves. What was the um, the other mu music video you did besides Silver Lines? There was so there was, yeah, there was Dreamlands. Uh, and based on uh, incredible footage created by uh, a visual designer in the UK. His name is Visual Don, and he has a super nice concept of providing um, yeah, mind-blowing visuals uh, on Creative Commons. He, most of his um, works are Creative Commons, a couple of them you have to, you have to buy, um, but the whole thing made so much sense based on the track. So the track is called Dreamland. It's about, um, you know, kind of a, a refuge, a very personal and intimate refuge of myself. Um, but it's outer space, something mm -hmm. that I want to be in, something that I dream of. Um, and there is um, in the visuals, um, in, in the videos of Visual Dawn, there is, there is this one astronaut. And I ended up seeing myself so much in this astronaut. So I decided to give this astronaut a name. His name is Mr. Mirandola. And he is on a quest. He's on a journey. He tries to find um, you know, the big truth in outer space, not knowing that he already carries himself into him, like in, in himself. Mm -hmm. So the very truth is not where you seek it, but you already carry it within yourself. Wow, wow, that's really cool. I like that. I like that a lot. I always like to hear the backstory with music videos, especially yeah. when there's a, a good story behind it. Like a lot of it's always nice to kind of, you know, communicate your own feelings, what you are, what you feel, what you think mm -hmm. across or via different means, in this case, music and, and, and visuals. Yes. For me, it's a lot bit. Yeah, I'm big with, with audio and visual, visuals. And it's always something I looked at, especially... In electronic music, like, you know, I think, I don't know, I think electronic music in general kind of like opened up a lot of things with that, like music videos, you know, uh, ambient sounds, things like that. Yeah, absolutely. It's always a nice um, combination, I should say. <laughs> and, and, and it kind of, it goes together so well. If you think about music without the visuals, it's, mm -hmm. it's to have, um, but then with the visuals, it gets a com to a completely new level. Yes. And also vice versa. If you have a look at uh, video footage, it's, it's nice to have. But once you add a score, once you add music to it, it, it evolves to a completely new stage. Yeah, exactly. My, my opinion, a, a, more exciting, a more exciting product. That's great. So David, before we wrap up, um, what any... I should say, are there any upcoming announcements you would like to talk about? Well, yes, you've mentioned that we have signed with Aztec Records and together with them, we're putting out uh, a single in March, 25th of March. Um, we'll be releasing a song called Experiencer, which will be a single of the upcoming album. And the album then will be released also via Aztec Records um, in April or May. We're not quite sure about the date yet, but before summer, it will be called Götterfunken. It's a, it's a German term. That's, that's what I can uh, reveal already. Götterfunken basically means the God's spark. And for us, it's the basis of the communication with our artificial band member, Lucy. That's really cool. I can't wait to check that out. 
So David, I have to thank you again for joining me today on the show. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Michael. I'll definitely and, uh, say hi to, to all the people watching this. It would be great to, you know, see you, meet you in the virtual world, in the real world one day. Hey, we're Liquid Modern. And you're watching The Beat on the Street. Just want to take a second to thank everyone for appearing on the show today. It's been a really fun time creating this show, doing interviews, and listening to everyone's music, uh, as well as discovering new things about each artist. If you ever want to be on a future show, feel free to email me at beatstreetsub at gmail.com. All links and emails will be below in the description box. Uh, coming up next, we have Johnny Fallout's Slow Burn music video, followed by an interview.
up, everybody? I'm here with Johnny Fallout. Let's welcome Johnny to the show. How's Glad everybody? to be here, Mike. I appreciate you making some time to join us today. It's, an all, it's a real pleasure. Yeah, it's an honor to be here. Thanks for all your support of indie electronic music. It's really appreciated. Uh, of course, of course. It's my favorite, you know, my favorite genre, I have to say. Um, you, you've been around the uh, scene for a while, I want to say. How did you first get into electronic music? Yeah, so, I mean, electronic music for me started with drum and bass, really, in the late 90s. There's a, uh, there, there's a venue called the Phoenix Landing in, in Boston. They've had a, a drum and bass night, I think, for the past 20 years or so. But oh, wow. I used to be a regular attendee of those um, and many other uh, sort of nightclubs and bars in the in the Boston area, just listening uh, to things occasionally, occasionally playing out with my uh, with my bands. But um, uh, we, we actually had a uh, um, a warehouse studio um, in this area of Boston called Kendall Square um, before it got developed into this uh, biotech haven. It is now there were these uh, um, <laughs> these warehouses there and they didn't have any tenants in them really. Uh, so there was a, there was a lab that my, uh, um, my partner, uh, in the, in the band, uh, worked at a lab. So, so we had access to this warehouse and we just set up a studio in there That's and did lots of, uh, electronica and stuff that was popular in the, in the late nineties. But that's, that's really how I got into electronic music. That's really cool. I remember even a lot of places like around the city, around Jersey, were like a big, almost like an old auditorium where they used to set up clubs, things like that, raves, indoor yep. raves, I should say. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, any any sort of building that could house a ton of people <laughs> that, yeah. was, that became a that became a club or a place for a rave. So, um, you know, obviously because of COVID, I haven't been out recently, but you know, my hope is to take uh, uh, my music out live as well. So, that'd be awesome. so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, so back in 2021, you came out with Cyber Ethereal. Which was a cool title, I want to say, coined by Fox Puppy, Jason. Yeah, um, yeah. He's, how, what was it like coming up with your debut album? How was it? Yeah, so so Cyber Ethereal, I I, you know, had been living with some of those songs for for a while, two to three years, and I tend to the way I tend to work is I write a song, and then you know sort of finish it up and let it sit for a little bit, and then come back to it and and take it apart and and. Uh, and iterate over it and, and hopefully make it better. Uh, so, so the songs that were a part of that, um, I'd been, been working over for a while. And uh, so, so that took a while to do. And I actually had a, a second group of songs that I'd been working on over the same period. So I had those, but I wasn't quite ready to release those. And so a lot of those songs are going to end up on on the next album, which uh, will be Cyber Ethereal 2. Oh, wow. That's great to know. Yeah, I definitely like your the combination of genres you have uh, in your music. It's almost like, you know, synthwave, um, well, some other genres in electronic music. You get a, I get a feeling of like an ambient, you know, tone in there as well, too, where it's like you're surrounded into the song. And now it's hard to, yeah, hard for me to to describe that but <laughs> yeah I, I think some of that layering comes from well first I, I listen to pretty much every kind of music um, I have a background in jazz performance so I, I mean that's sort of this wide variety of influences um, and one of the bands that I really love uh, is Underworld um, which you know they're not quite as active now but they they were one of the more important bands to come out of that Mm -hmm. a time period in the late 90s early 2000s and they tend to layer a lot of um a lot of parts together i don't do it nearly as well as they do um but uh that's that's where some of that 
desirement to pull in lots of genres and awesome. and uh, and layer things into complex patterns. That's where that comes from. That's awesome. I'm actually I'm a big jazz fan for a long time now. I remember back in uh, it was a club back when I was younger uh, in the city. We walked into it and uh, you know I wasn't expecting it, but it just mm-hmm. felt, you know it was great. We walked. I think it was like the wrong club or something, or maybe <laughs> night or something. We weren't expecting it, but that's how I kind of got into it too, as well too. And we have we have a local uh, jazz FM station over here too, which is I, I play a lot as well too. Wow, it's really Excellent. cool. Excellent. Yeah. So um, your previous music video for Slow Burn that came. Um, what was it like coming up with that video with the? Uh, so I think slow burn is is i mean it's one of the songs that really came out the way i wanted it to um that it's not always the case when when you're creating something but but slow burn is about as close as to you know what what i what i felt a song uh could and should be uh so when i was putting together the the video it's actually um you know a lot of those pieces are are um you know, just sort of freely available um, uh, footage. Mm-hmm. And so, so I spend a lot of time, I call it uh, digital crate digging. So if you're familiar with DJ culture, there's crate digging where you're just going through all these, uh, you know, albums, all this vinyl uh, to try to find, or, you know, CDs to try to find uh, sort of unique sounds, unique albums. Awesome. Um, so I think people do that digitally now. They, they're, looking for samples or looking for loops or looking for video that 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 feels right um now if you're someone like Zarina, you can you know you've got like that uh that talent to direct and film your own stuff for me it was about finding sort of the right uh the right kind of uh uh footage to put together uh and and do that uh do that research do that crate digging um, of course yeah. so so yeah, so I was really looking for this this feeling of um, like this longing feeling, right? Like this this loneliness um, where you're wanting to be with somebody, um, but you're far away and you want to reach out and um, and be with them, mm-hmm. but but you can't because because of the distance between you. Whether that's because of COVID or in the video, <laughs> this happens to be because this person's in space and they're trying to get home to Earth. Oh, okay. Um, so, I mean, slow burn is just about that, uh, you know, that attraction, that desire to, to be with somebody who's, who's not there. Um, and, and so I felt like the, uh, the footage really, really, uh, met that feeling. And so that's how that came together. Yeah, no, that's awesome. It's, it's great. Cause I, I use a lot of, um, uh, stock footage as well too, with things, you know, promotion, things I put out. I mean, it's hard to film you know it'd be hard to uh, have anything you know filmed at this time especially with the last couple of years so I, yeah that's I, very uh, true yeah i mean you know just to have a production company and stuff like that to get your full ideas i think you know can be a pain too but <laughs> <laughs> so, you, so you mentioned cyber Therio too um is there any other announcements for future announcements anything you'd like to let us know about yeah so uh, we all know about the uh, war in Ukraine, and uh, Binaural Space is an electronic artist who's putting together uh, a compilation, which is which is set for Bandcamp Friday, which is coming up March. Let's see, fourth maybe. I um, so yeah, it's it's the yeah. Friday. I could check my calendar, but it's something like that. Um, yeah, March the fourth. So, so this compilation is going to be um, going to be released then, or at least uh, so far as I understand it. Um, no word right now on the total number of artists involved, but but I've seen a lot of activity um, about the compilation. I happen to have a piece ready uh, that's an instrumental piece, more similar to I, I did an instrumental EP last year called Escape from Ultra City, yep. which is kind of a cyberpunk kind of thing. So uh, I have a follow-up album I'm working on, uh, instrumental, and I just happen to have um, 
an instrumental piece just about ready to go. And I thought, you know, what better way than to contribute it to this, uh, this compilation. So if, uh, yeah, if, if, if you're interested, um, you know, it's coming out Bandcamp Friday and, uh, you know, it's a compilation to benefit, uh, uh, the Ukrainian people. Awesome. I'll definitely, I'll put a link below in the video so people can definitely check that out. It'd be great. So Johnny, I want to thank you. Uh, this is the first show. Beat on yeah. The I, Hopefully I, we, we did a good enough job that there can be a second show. Yeah, of course. I hope so. <laughs> um, thank you. And I look forward to more of your music coming out and possibly doing this again as well too in the future. Yeah. No, you've, you've done such a great job with pop art Ave and, and really lending support to the, uh, to the community. Can't thank you enough, Mike. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. I mean, it's, yeah. it's been a lot of fun. I have fun with it. So that's great work <laughs> at that time guys to wrap up the show i want to thank everybody for appearing in the first episode of the beat on the street cole from retro reverb records ollie galaxis kal l jagger johnny fallout and lucy dreams i thank you i hope everyone enjoys this show and again if you ever want to be on the show do a cameo interview music video have your track on email me at beatstreetsub at gmail.com Again, this is Michael Anthony for The Beat on the Street. Thank you for watching.